Welcome back, beautiful people, to another episode of your favorite podcast, Right Beside You, where we do life right beside each other. My name's Christina Nicole, and I am here with my best friend, my boyfriend, Georgie D. And the D stands for dab. Oh, how you doing? I'm ready to... Get this episode pin. Okay. Today, I'm going to sing. I'm not going to dance. <laughs> but I'm going to make you move your pants. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm ready to eat after this episode. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, it's about that time. Mm. Mm. Don't you hurt nobody with that thing. So what is the topic of discussion today, my dear? Let's talk about something that we use every day. Something that's on your phone, on your computer. Some people even have it on their refrigerator. Oh. I'm talking about social media. Okay. And... I think now is just a really good time to talk about how what you see on social media is not always an accurate representation of reality. That's true. Because when you're scrolling through, all you're seeing is people's highlights. And... For some people, it's the first thing they do when they wake up, the last thing they do before they go to bed. And, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I feel very strongly about this because everything on social networks or even media, period, is curated. And you really don't know. People usually compare themselves to these altered or even distorted images sometimes. And they think this is what life should be. This is not what my life looks like. So therefore they start comparing themselves to, you know, these social media influencers and nothing against them, but it's not realistic. And I think J. Cole said it best. And J. Cole said, pretty girls with natural bodies and regular jobs are still winning. Don't let that social media fool you. Uh And that really hits home for me because... I have a natural body. I have a regular, degular job. And, you know, sometimes it is easy to look at your social media feed and say, oh, dang, is this how I'm supposed to look? Or, you know, looking on TV, is this what is appealing to men or even society? And it's really not. So I think that presents the discussion around how you set boundaries with your social media and what are you looking at on a daily basis as you're passively scrolling. So with me, I had to modify what I was looking at, you know, following accounts that were more encouraging and inspirational in business centered or spiritual centered or just reality based as opposed to something like i don't know i'll just throw the kardashians out there where they're pumped full of plastic and (laughs) everything is scripted and 
like you said, curated to present an image that isn't necessarily based in reality. Yeah. I know for me, I definitely have started to unfollow people Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of accounts that are on my Instagram, for example, where I just say, who is this person? I don't even know them. Bye. And more and more, I feel like it's a freeing thing to not have to, to not be worried about what somebody you don't know or don't care about is doing. Granted, there's accounts that I follow with cars and things that interest me, but I also have to maintain a a mindset of you're looking at people's curated highlight reels. So when you see, oh, this person's in Mexico, this person's in Hawaii, this person's in Greece, this person's on a beach, this person's snorkeling, you have to realize that they probably work a regular job like you. They probably are posting old pictures from three years ago trying to look good. And that's the, I guess, conundrum for me about social media is just always having to remember what what you're seeing isn't isn't a reflection of reality. Yeah, I think you make a good point. What's interesting is when I see pictures like that, I don't react the same way as you. For instance, I love looking at travel photos, not necessarily of other people, but just travel photos in general. So if there's a scene, if there's scenery or a particular beach or a hike that someone went on, I will save that. So you can get there. So I can go and add it to my bucket list. So I actually like seeing when people travel to different places, even if it was three years ago, because they're saying, hey, wow, look at this beautiful beach that I went to or this rock that I saw or a scene. And I actually enjoy looking at those travel photos. But in those passively scrolling moments, I do have to set boundaries and limits on how much time I am looking at my phone or just a screen throughout the day. Because there are a lot of studies on the amount of screen time that we as adults, as teens and children are consuming daily. No, definitely. It's very easy for you to open Instagram and just start scrolling. And next thing you know, you've been scrolling for 30 minutes. And it's also really interesting to me how because of the the high that social media gives you, just from looking for, oh, something new coming, is something new coming, oh, what am I going to see, what am I going to see, it almost gives you a Pavlovian effect where you become sort of trained to automatically go to those apps and those websites. Oh, yeah. And I know for me, there was a time where I would, every time I opened my web browser, my fingers would just go to Facebook. And there was a point where I realized, why am I even on Facebook? I I was here two minutes ago. What nothing's changed in two minutes. Yeah. But social media conditions you to keep wanting more and keep chasing that high. Yeah. And it almost feels like a drug. It's definitely addicting. And there's a lot of studies that show how the brain is triggered when you get these likes or these notifications that pop up on your screen and it releases the hormone dopamine and it's basically the same reaction as if 
you're doing cocaine, if you're eating chocolate, if you're gambling. Did you just equate chocolate to cocaine? (laughs) Yes. And even lighting up a cigarette. So these things are interconnected, even though they have nothing to do with each other. So that's an interesting point on how the brain responds to these notifications and these likes. And no wonder there's this thirst that's out there with people, women and men, who just seek that constantly and daily. Mm -hmm. That validation that you get from the little blue thumbs up or the little red heart. Mm Mm-hmm. So there's there's a lot of people, it seems to me, that use social media as a proxy for real relationships, which at a time like right now where there are a lot of people, especially elderly people who are in isolation and in quarantine for their own safety, it's... It can be a good thing. And I think that there are some positives that can come from social media. Yeah, for sure. One of the big things for me is it allows me to, in some small way, keep up with family and friends that I can't normally go see. I have family that's spread all across the country Mm -hmm. from New York, Connecticut, D.C., Tennessee, Texas, Idaho. Idaho. Oh. (laughs) But I can't go see all these people. I'm in California. They're where they are. But it's good being able to see them and know that they're doing well. And it's an easy way to share photos and have some amount of connection without it being detrimental. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. There are positive aspects of social media. I think another one is this idea of promoting worthwhile causes and spreading awareness around issues. That's one way that you can connect with other people or find other communities who do share those same passions and interests yeah who do share those same interests and passions about it could be about bunnies it could be about dogs it could be about why am i thinking about animals and because you're hungry (sighs) no that's rude i don't eat dogs. no because you eat rabbit food (laughs) (laughs) she's mad at me now wow i would never i'm in the doghouse i'm in the doghouse snoop doggy dog but like i was saying there are sources of valuable information on the internet we just have to make sure that They're positively influencing your life rather than negatively influencing your life. What would you say are some of those negative influences that can creep in from overuse of cocaine social media? (laughs) I think this idea of feeling like you're connecting, but you're really by yourself and it could lead to even more isolation And with that isolation and you just sitting there, you're basically living a sedentary lifestyle. And that can have adverse effects on your health, leading to obesity, leading to anxiety and depression with the fear of missing out on things. FOMO. FOMO, for sure. Like you brought up. So... Those are the main ones for me. What would you say are the negative aspects? To me, the negative aspect of social media is when you become so absorbed in it 
that it outweighs your real life. Ooh, that's so good. if you're at a family dinner mm. and all you're worried about is posting pictures of this family dinner so that they look good on Facebook or do it for the gram. Mm. When you are out there intentionally faking the funk so that you can get these digital likes that really, let's be honest, for 99.5% of people, those digital likes don't mean anything. Yeah. You're not Kylie Jenner. You're not getting paid a million dollars to post a picture and those likes are like are dollar signs in your bank account. So to me, when you stop being engaged in real life with the people around you and you start spending more time and energy in putting up that facade and painting that picture of who you want to be, because you can be whoever you want to be on the internet. Mm, Yes, you can. (laughs) You sound like you had a bad experience. (sighs) <sighs> that's Not, another episode. I wasn't catfished or anything. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah, it's just, that's the danger for me. I like how you mentioned the self-absorption aspect of it. Just because hashtag selfie. You know how I feel about selfies. I know how you feel about selfies, but please enlighten the people. I think that selfies are a terrible excuse for photography. Selfies are not art. It's just self-absorption. And there's nothing I dislike more. All right, I'll, I'll tell a little story. Back when a young player was single and ready to mingle. (laughs) <laughs> if I was on a girl's dating profile or if I looked at her Instagram and all her pictures were selfies, it was almost always an automatic no for me. Because when I see somebody whose page is all selfies, it says to me, one, they don't have any friends. <laughs> because... They couldn't ask anybody to hold the camera. But two, I don't need to see a picture of your face in your car. You don't have to post that every day. You look the same as you did yesterday. You look the same as you did the day before. (laughs) And I know I'm probably going to offend some people, but selfies are stupid. I almost wish that they would disable the front-facing camera on phones unless you were on a video call. Yeah. Yeah. I said, you want to take a selfie real quick? Do it for the gram. Hashtag selfie game strong. Click, click. Don't judge me. I'm a hypocrite. (laughs) Oh, the hypocrisy. (laughs) But. Yeah, the. I've seen captions where people post selfies. And it says, dinner with the kids. And it's a picture of their face. Where are the kids? Where's the dinner? (laughs) Am I hungry? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, there's, to me, there's something off when that's the, the only thing you have going in your life is pictures of your face. Granted, the social media site's called Facebook, but... There's so many more things around you and there's so many better ways to take a picture than at arm's length with holding the camera and 20 years from now we're going to look back and it's just going to be a bunch of pictures with people's arms hanging off the side of the picture. (laughs) I mean, I hear you. I agree somewhat. There are a few times where, I'm going to be honest, I traveled alone a lot, and there were some times where 
I was the only person that I trusted holding my own phone. Oh, yeah. Been there. So I'll snap a photo. Guilty or not guilty in the sense of I'm not sitting there for 10 hours or an hour straight taking 500 pictures of myself. Making the same duck face. Duck lips. And I'm not necessarily posting all of these every five seconds. There's no judgment to those who do per se. I'm judging. From my aspect. like There is here. If that's what you want to do, boo, that's what you're going to do. But then I think I have to really question why. What is the underlying reason why we're doing this? And you mentioned it earlier a little bit and you touched on that validation that people seek. Tell me I'm pretty. (laughs) And just this round the clock constant notifications that people get. I think that kind of disturbs me. When I'm asleep, I want to just sleep. I put my phone on do not disturb, set it literally facing down so that I don't even see the light shining. And I know a few times you'll leave your phone up and I'll see it. And I get yelled at. What is that light? Oh, it's so bright. Oh, the deception. (laughs) <laughs> it's blinding lights. Shout out the weekend. Hey. I forgot the dance. <laughs> it was back in the early days of TikTok when you could just dance and the Chinese government wasn't known to be stealing all your information. We practiced this, George. Different conversation, but go on. I think that's basically what I was getting at. It's just, there's so many aspects to social media and just that networking and the screen time that goes along with it. And when you mentioned if you're at a family gathering and you're not even engaging with the people, the real people who are in front of you, even if you are just playing a game on your phone. I mean, come on. There should be phone-free zones in the household. I think that's what our challenge to the people is going to be, is... Go through a din- Try to go through a dinner without your cell phone. Yeah. Don't even bring it to the table. Yeah. And just see how much the quality of the conversation improves when you actually talk to each other as opposed to sharing memes. I love me a good meme, but <laughs> no, ban memes at the dinner table. Yeah. Because, like you said, it's... When you're even on a game, the the bigger issue is the invasiveness of technology and how it has changed human social behavior. People didn't, people used to sit down for dinner at the same table. Now we're such an on the go, on the move world that the only time we really connect is through a FaceTime call, through a Instagram like and that that's what I would challenge people to do is just evaluate how much time you spend on social media and evaluate how much time how much of that time could be spent enjoying the people around you and really increasing the quality of your relationships and the quality of the conversations you have. And I'm guilty of it, too. I find myself sometimes just playing a little bit of Mexican train. But don't nobody want to see me on that Mexican train. We definitely had this conversation. Do you remember? No. I remember nothing. No, I don't remember for real. Do you remember when your Snapchat would constantly be going off? And the second that you get a notification, you're like... That's because I'm popular. 
All my fans love me. But yeah, I at this point, I don't even get notifications. I turned them all off because most of that stuff will still be there whenever I decide to go look at it. I have all my social media tucked into a folder on the fourth or fifth page of my phone so that when I open my phone, it's not the first thing I'm tempted to do. And I think one of the best things that we did from a mental health standpoint was we both got off social media for what was it, three months or six months? Yeah, we started off the year with the social media cleanse. I felt so positive after that. The first few days were rough. I felt like a addict. I said, I, I have Facebook notifications. They're going to stack up. And then at some point, I stopped caring. Yeah. It's funny how it is a topic of conversation. I remember talking to a few of my family members and they would ask, oh, did you see so-and-so doing this? Or they kind of assumed that I saw everything going on on social media and they would try to Start create a conversation. conversation. Yeah. And I would say, oh, I didn't see that. And they they would say, oh, I forgot you're out of the the matrix. <laughs> yeah. You're, you should, unplugged from Big Brother. Unplugged from Big Brother and... Honestly, I think every year I would like to have a social media cleanse of some sort. Now, it's a little different now because we're trying to utilize that space as a promotional aspect for the episodes that we've created and share positivity, share information, inspire people, encourage and encourage ourselves. So I've tried to shift what I use these platforms for. Not necessarily comparing your life and my life and our lives. I'm trying to utilize it in a different way. And with that, I like what you said earlier about challenging people to set those limitations and those boundaries. You can look on your phone and see how much time you spend using your phone, on social media, on each app, and you can set a limit. One hour, two hours, max. And we're not saying don't use it, we use it. We're just saying have some limitations. That and be aware of how much you are using it Mm -hmm. because it's very easy to slip into a mode where you're just mindlessly scrolling and before you know it you've scrolled for three hours and your kids are screaming the house is on fire (laughs) the dog's dead and you're just oblivious to it because you're scrolling through instagram selfies yeah i think that you should set some downtime too for instance If you're winding down and getting ready to go to sleep, your bedtime is 10 p.m., try to step away from your phone like 45 minutes to an hour before. And then when you wake up first thing in the morning, and I'm guilty of this because my alarm's going off, I look at my phone, I press snooze, et cetera, et cetera, try to... Step away from your phone, use the restroom, brush your teeth, just set an intention for the day, have a routine, whether it's meditating, whether it's drinking some water. Oh, you said drinking. I was like, yeah, yeah, set a routine. If you pray to the Lord. Yeah, this is a sacrament beer. (laughs) Whatever you do, create a routine around Something that's going to benefit you and set the tone for your day. Use social media. Don't let it use you. And crank that soldier boy. You crank that soldier. All right, I'll stop. (laughs) Hey, um, everyone out there who's still listening, (laughs) let us know if you love it when I sing or let us know if you hate it. 
Yeah, DM us because I would love to read these. Or if you have messages. if you have song requests, I take song requests. Or if you have topics that you would like us to discuss. Oh, a song request just came in right now. R E S P E C T. Find out what it means to me. R E S P E C T. Beep 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 beep. All right, that was I made that up. I requested that song. Oh, okay. I'm, that... I'm very good at getting off topic. Yes, you are. So I would pose the question: Are we slaves to our phone? Yes, we are. We've gotten to a point where the phone is everything. Mm. There was that weekend a couple of, was it two weekends ago? I forgot my wallet at work and I was able to get through the whole weekend with my phone. Yeah. I was able to go to the store and buy stuff because I have my credit card on my phone. Mm -hmm. I was able to order me a pizza because your boy likes pizza. That's my guilty pleasure. And I was able to order it and pay for it on the phone. Um, We use our phones to get directions. And there's a lot of people who wouldn't be able to even navigate around their own city without their phone. We rely on our phones to get our news, to get the weather, Mm -hmm. to check the stocks. Our, Our phone, we have a calculator in our pocket. Our phone is our camera. So, yeah, I think that we are, in a lot of ways, slaves to our phones now. I thought it was interesting when I was looking up some of the statistics on averages of time spent on our phones, computers, watching TV, just screen time overall... And it says that children, 8 to 12, spend about 4 to 6 hours a day on their screens. That's 25%. And teens spend about 9 hours a day. And adults, you and I, on average spend 10 hours and 39 minutes a day. So that sounds like a whole lot of folks ain't getting no work done. (laughs) Do you have uh, anything you'd like to say about that? <laughs> We're just going to leave it at that. I think the goal at the end of the day should be to find a healthy balance between use and abuse. Mm-hmm. Because the phone is like anything else. In moderation, it's great. You can get information for how to navigate somewhere. I use my phone today to get me around a traffic jam. Yeah. You can use it to take pictures and create art. There's a lot of great things you can do with your phone, but it's also very easy to get trapped in it and find yourself using it to kill time and... And becoming dependent on your phone to the point where you're not even doing anything else or you can't think without your phone. Yeah. If you don't have your, oh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? For me, one of the things I try to be intentional about at work especially is putting my phone down on my on my bench or in my locker. Or if I'm using my phone to play music, I'll cut some music on. I'll go to the other side of the shop and work and do what I'm actually there to do because I'm not there to send text messages or scroll Reddit and find dank memes and send them to my baby. Or Although I do... Cute pictures of puppies. That's what I was going to say. I do appreciate when I'm having a tough day at work when you just send me... All these cute little puppy dogs cuddling up together. I appreciate that. Well, I like puppies too. I have another question. And it's in regards to... Hmm. 
the culture of social media? Are we failing as a culture around this idea of social media and using it every single day and how people are constantly comparing themselves to distorted images are we failing in that regard are we failing our kids the future generations because we didn't have this when we were growing up I didn't have to look at crazy models on Instagram who are size negative negatives (laughs) that's a new size I'm not familiar with that uh I'm trying to prove a point here. Okay. Although it definitely existed in our world growing up in elementary and middle school. You were isolated from it. Exactly. I wasn't comparing my pictures constantly to a side-by-side photo of someone else. Mm -hmm. That creates this struggle with insecurities and body image. Well, I think that struggle's always been there because... The problem when we were kids was, oh, the Barbie doll has, doesn't have realistic proportions. If Barbie was real, she'd have 62-inch long legs and an a 8-inch waist. So I think that there's always going to be a struggle with body image and there will always be something to compare your proportions to that is an unrealistic standard that you won't measure up to. I just think now it's more accessible and maybe it's more realistic in the sense that it appears to be more realistic because you see these doctored pictures of these women who you look at the before and after in Photoshop and they don't even look like the same person. They they stretch their legs and and clean their eyes up and their skin is smooth as silk and that's not real. So I do think to answer your question, yes, I do think we are are not necessarily failing because as long as you know what you're up against, it's all good. If as long as you know what the game is, then you can play it accordingly. But I don't think that it's terribly different from growing up because there were those unrealistic standards when we were kids. It was just called Barbie. Okay. That was just a question I had. Okay. Do you think that there's an age that's too young for a kid to be on social media? Oh uh, Yeah, absolutely. Without question. <laughs> How old is old enough to be on social media? What is the age that you would allow your kid to start an Instagram or Facebook account? A healthy age, in my opinion, is when you're on your way out of high school into college. That's, for me, in an ideal world. However, I already know kids these days... If they're told not to do something, they're going to they're gonna sneak around and do it. Therefore, I don't care if it's on their friend's phone. They will have another account or they will have an account. And so, I got a belt. <laughs> I definitely think it's toxic at a very young age to start introducing social media. Now I'm talking about in elementary school, in middle school. Even in high school, because there's so much bullying that happens on these social media sites and just online in general. And that's something that you ideally want to protect your child from and you want to keep them in this bubble, but that's not reality. Mm -hmm. And I think just having that open communication with your child and your children and trying to be as transparent as possible and explain this is the reason why there's kids there's people there are kids 
who are committing suicide over the internet. And that, to me, is something that I can't even begin to believe. That is so sad. One of the things you said that really stuck out to me was bullying. And it made me think about back when I was in high school. Mm Mm-hmm. And even beyond social media, there are a lot of pitfalls that young kids can fall into with technology. Yeah. There was a girl at my high school who sent a guy a naked photo of herself. That photo made its way around the entire school. Mm. And I can't imagine what that would be like to show up to school the next day as a... 14, 15 year old girl and everybody's passing around this naked photo of you. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't want that picture floating around of me now. But if you join my OnlyFans account, no, I'm just playing. (laughs) But I mean, that's, and kids can be really cruel without Mm. the boldness that you get added on of hiding behind a screen because Adults even become bullies and become keyboard warriors where they become emboldened to say things that they wouldn't say if they were sitting across the room from you, if they weren't sitting right beside you. So, yeah, I think you're right. I wouldn't want my kids... To be on social media, there's nothing, there's nothing of value, I feel, that you really need from it in high school. You don't need to be going to parties in high school. You're, you're going to see the same people on Monday. So it's, you're in high school, your friendship's. Our most friendships are not that deep to where you can't be without them. And if you can't, you can call them up, you can text them, and I think that's okay. But there Or they are, can come over the house. Exactly. There are a lot of pitfalls. I think that transition from high school to college is a good time to become social media uh, aware or become... I guess, somewhat active. Engage in social media. Because you want to maintain maintain those relationships with your high school buddies who are going maybe out of state to college or somewhere else, but then also join new communities and make new friends. And that's honestly an oxymoron or somewhat of a contradiction, I guess, in our relationship because Facebook... Brought us together. She slid in my DMs. Facebook said, hey. She didn't disagree. You're cute. He's cute. You go to UC San Diego. I go to UC San Diego. Your boyfriend doesn't. He's a friend. He's not a fact. I'm now. a friend. I'm the winner. Who? She mine. She mine. Oh, I'm hitting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely. And for me, Facebook was great in college. Yeah. That was the best time to use social media, in my opinion, because it allowed you to connect with people with similar interests on your campus. It allowed you to connect with people uh, and meet people that you might not meet. That's how I found the Black Student Union and attended some of the meetings because somebody saw me and reached out. That's how I met other black people on campus. I'd I'd see them on Facebook and say, oh, that's so-and-so. I seen them walking around campus. I add them and I... And like you said, it's kind of counter what we're saying, but there's a time and a place. And I think college is great for social media because you don't have 
it's not such a small world like high school is. So the bullying isn't as important because you can go find new friends in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's important to disconnect for sure and just put down your technology. And when you are on social media, try to be aware and say, look, these are people's highlight reels. These are curated. These are filtered photos. And you can't really believe everything that you see. You mentioned earlier with the distortion of a photo and it being photoshopped, people have called out influencers or celebrities for modifying their pictures so much that you could see the room kind of... Ripple in the background. Exactly. Or a fence or a door that's supposed to be straight and it's like... But it made their booty look big. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you said that stuck out to me in that one was when you were talking about the influencers and that's just another facet of the facade of people doing things for clout on social media. The thing that I'm thinking of specifically is that video we saw where that girl pulled up in a nice car where they were cleaning up after, Uh, people busted up store windows and somebody was putting up a plywood on a store. Oh my gosh. She jumped out the car, grabbed the drill, took a picture with it, handed it back to the guy and jumped back in the car and drove off. But when you see the picture on the Instagram with the caption, you're going to say, oh, what a great person. What a great person. And that's not the reality. What's even crazier is she asked the guy... Who was actually working. He literally was just doing his job. Minding his business. She asked him to stop (laughs) doing his job. So that she could manipulate this image so much. To paint this narrative that she was helping the community. That's insane. Yeah, it is. That reminds me of that one photo. I'm pretty sure I showed you where these two girls kind of faked the funk and pretended that they were actually at the protest with the people for the people. And they were holding up signs, looked like they were dressed for Coachella. And they took a picture in the middle of the protest and then they just left. That's... These these are the things where you literally, all you can do is shake your head. Absolutely. I mean, that's, to me, that's despicable. That's <laughs> low because now you're trying to profiteer off of other people's pain and off of other people's um, misfortune or off of other people's I mean, we can go on and on about all these so-called influencers doing clout chasing and then posting up their good deeds when, if you zoom back the camera, you can see the real picture. Yeah. So, let's, let's, let, let's cut it off here. My closing thought is an old black saying... From when I was a kid, and it kind of sort of applies, it really doesn't, but I just want to say it now because it's, I feel like it's relevant to what we were, what we've been talking about for the last, however long we've been on here. (laughs) An hour. Don't fake the funk on a nasty dunk. I don't know what the dunk has to do with it, but don't fake the funk. Be genuine be real and I think that that in the end is more rewarding than pretending to be something that you're not yeah and I'm not saying don't 
don't post your highlight reel. Post your highlight reel. That's great. You you have that right. But don't fabricate a highlight reel to look better to impress people that you don't know and people that probably don't care about you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. Well, I think we can close it up with that. Don't fake the funk. Thank you once again for listening to the Right Beside You podcast where we do life right beside each other. Because at the end of the day, I'm not above you. I'm not below you. I'm I'm right right beside beside you. you. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing on Apple, iHeart, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.